Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're at the Warrington Irish Club for the Irish Democratic League of Britain meeting and celebration. But first we are off to visit St Oswald and St Edmunds Roman Catholic Church in Wigan. This is a beautiful church featuring the fantastic windows of Harry Clark. We'll also be finding out about the holy hand of St Edmund of Arrowsmith which is stored there. This church is the second church that's built on this site and the land around here was owned by the Gerard family which was one of the great Lancashire recusant families who stayed true to the Catholic faith throughout the whole period of the Reformation and in 1822 the first church was built on this site and that church lasted until 1925 when construction of this church was begun and this church was eventually opened in 1930. Canon O'Mara was born in County Tipperary and he went to school in Mount Mallory and then studied for the priesthood in Maynooth and he was ordained in 1891 and then he came here to Ashton and he spent the whole of his priestly life here in Ashton in Makerfield and he was parish priest here for 50 years and it was Canon O'Mara who was the instigator of the building of the new church and so the old church was demolished in 1925 and then the story was told that the foundations were laid for a different church and the architect went on holiday to France and saw this Romanesque style of architecture and came back and convinced Karen O'Mara that this was the building that he needed to have as his parish church. The architect was J.K. Brocklesby um, he never drew up any plans. It was all done and decided on site um, in accordance with his belief in the arts and crafts movement, uh, which was prevalent at the time. Late 1920s to 1930, that was the time of the Great Depression. And in order to keep the local miners who were out on strike useful, uh, they were employed, or oh, not actually employed because they did it voluntary, uh, to do the labouring and the uh, stonework. And we had a local stonemason by the name of the Howe Brothers, 
who did all the intricate work, but the local people addressed the stone and consequently this great edifice went up to the glory of God. The Harry Clark windows here in Ashton in Makerfield are very special. Firstly, this is the last set of windows that he designs for any church in the United Kingdom. Beset with ill health problems, this is the last big commission. And above my head and behind me, you have these seven wonderful um, separate windows, which were originally conceived as part of a much larger campaign of stained glass for the church. However, ill health meant that only the seven windows behind can be guaranteed to be the work of Harry Clark, with some support from his studio. And there are somewhere in the region of 14 further windows in this church that show the development of the Harry Clark Studios. They would run through into the early 1970s and certainly we have some mid-1930s glass which still looks so close to the Harry Clark originals and then running on through as new ideas and developments come in, still carrying that overall concept that this is something to do with Harry Clark and the studios continued um, very energetically during the 1930s and certainly into the 40s and 50s. And that's what makes this church so important that you have not only seven wonderful originals from 1928, and certainly these were being installed through into the September for the, the opening and the dedication of this church. But certainly then over the next 20, 25 years, we have a series of further Harry Clark Studio stained glass windows, which allows everybody the opportunity to actually begin to examine and look and see the differences. Often subtly at the start, but towards the end, you really can tell the different periods of Harry Clark Studio stained glass. I did a feature on Harry Clark in the Irish Post last year and I set out on a kind of a journey to find out where the Harry Clark windows are in the UK and I have been absolutely amazed at the, the all over the country there are Harry Clark windows and as Mike said earlier some originals by him others by his studio after his very untimely death he died a very young man at the age of 41 um, from TB he was traveling back to Ireland from Switzerland uh, and died. And um, he's a great ambassador of arts and crafts and creativity from Ireland. And to have the wealth of his windows in the UK, and especially here in this church, um, the, the colors, the, um, the, the light coming in, this is the Aladdin's cave of Harry Clark windows in, in, in the UK. One of the joys is to come to this church at different times of the day, different times of the year, different lighting conditions. The windows all glow, it's like jewels being floodlit from behind and they create a wonderful, deeply spiritual presence. I first came to this church um, when I got married in 1969 and it really struck me then as to how wonderful and how magnificent it was. And at that point we didn't live in the parish but we came seven years later to live back in Ashton because my wife was born and bred in Ashton 
uh, and I got interested in the church and the history of it, uh, and especially not just the, uh, the architecture, but the stained glass, but the architecture itself is uh, um, very different, and it is the only one, uh, as far as we are aware, north of the River Loire, uh, of this style. So proud that we have this Irishman, and we have this perpetual testament to his creativity in art, in all these windows, throughout Ireland, obviously, and I'm so glad we have so many here uh, in the UK. So this church became the shrine of the Holy Hand of St Edmund Arrowsmith, who was one of the 40 martyrs of England and Wales, who was canonised by Pope Paul VI in 1970. And so we still have the Holy Hand of St Edmund Arrowsmith here in our church. And of course a lot of people travel to here to have a special blessing uh, by the Holy Hand. Indeed, yes, and in days gone by, very many more people, but still we have a very special devotion and we give blessings to those who are sick um, at the end of Mass, uh, each time there is Mass here, um, and people come from far and wide to receive a blessing with the Holy Hand and also to take a piece of cloth that's been blessed by the Holy Hand as well for them to keep. So we're here now in the Lady Chapel in the church of St Oswald and St Edmund Arrowsmith and it was in the Lady Chapel that the Holy Hand which I'm holding of St Edmund Arrowsmith was kept after his canonisation in 1970 and the window behind me depicts the story of St Edmund Arrowsmith who was a local man born near here in Haydock, went to school nearby and went to become a priest at the beginning of the 17th century, returning to the English missions, as they were called at the time, in 1613, and was eventually martyred for being a priest at Lancaster in 1628. And after his martyrdom, his family were able to recover his hand, which they kept for many years, many centuries, before it was handed over into the care of our parish. The windows depict the faith of our fathers and, and to have the, um, the relic here is great as well. And we'll finish off with a blessing and go our separate ways till we meet again. So we give you all now a very special blessing, especially for those of you who may be sick or suffering in some way. And we pray that the Lord, through the intercession of St Edmund R. Smith, may heal you and grant all your intentions in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're in the area, why not visit this beautiful church? It's got so much history and I'm sure that Father John Gorman would be delighted to give you a blessing from the holy hand of St Edmund of Arrowsmith. Now we're going to take a little break and we'll see you very soon. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809.
Welcome back. Now it's time to visit the Warrington Irish Club for the Irish Democratic League of Britain meeting and celebration. This involves four clubs from around Lancashire working together and supporting each other. This is the first time they've managed to meet up in almost two years and they certainly enjoy their get together. Frank, Chairman of the Warrington Irish Club and of course Chairman of the Irish Democratic League of Britain as well. You were a really busy man. Yeah, very busy at the moment. Yeah. Uh, now you had a big meeting here today. What was this all about? We have a, a, a meeting, the different clubs host a meeting, about two, four times a year, different clubs, Bolton, uh, Haslingdon, um, Paddy's and uh, that's how we work it. It's to keep it all together. Yeah. It's culture at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, everybody seems to enjoy it. We'll go to their club now. We're going to go to Bolton now on the 10th of April. So they'll host it, put food on the music and exchange stories and find an awful lot out about uh, different areas and different clubs, how they operate. That's the idea of the um, Emigrant Sport Programme. The Brian Baru is one of the oldest clubs in Great Britain, if not the, the oldest. We know it goes back to a minimum 1889, and we're now doing some heritage and research that we've got records of even prior to that, which we, we're hoping to make public when we open a, a heritage room next year, uh, which we're looking to do. We've had obviously the same as every club recently had big problems with the, the COVID situation. Uh, however, since we reopened in July, we've now just passed 400 members, 402, 403 members. So we're, we're bouncing back, uh, we're trying to revitalise the club. Um, we've had some great feedback from the members and new members and trying to get the old, the new and be a bit more diverse and, and just pro you know, hopefully prosper for the future, Martin. Last time you were down the club, of course, you were there for the Castlemore Cayley Band. They're back again on the 29th of January, so we're looking forward very much to that. Uh, we have still have regular uh, Irish music every weekend, Saturday, Sunday and Sunday afternoon. Uh, we've also got our St. Patrick's Parade, which we started in 1986, uh, which is coming up on the Sunday the 13th of March, obviously. Uh, so we've got a lot coming up in the next few weeks, so hopefully we'll get a few more people down there, a few new members. Uh, everybody's welcome, of course. We have a committee, to, a subcommittee running the, the St. Patrick's Parade. Uh, anybody, if you get in touch with the club itself, um, either through the website or through our Facebook page, they're very welcome to come up with ideas, help, support, the more the better. Uh, we obviously need as much support as we can, same as everybody, so we welcome any support of any kind. We've got live music on all the time. Every Saturday night, live music. And then we have bingo for the elderly at uh, the Wednesdays and uh, that's supported by the IDL. We're doing marvellous at the moment, say that COVID uh, is going around. It's, uh, we've had one or two people uh, take bad with it, but not affected us that much. And of course Jacqueline does a great job here as well, the manager. Absolutely brilliant, yeah, yeah. She was a secretary and now she took over as uh, stewardess and she's making a building job of it. Everybody loves her. I've been involved in the club, Martin, since 2014. I put my name down to be on the committee. I ended up being um, secretary. Um, and then in April this year, I, I moved over off the committee to the um, club steward, stewardess, or well, bar manager, so, so yeah. But I like it, yeah, it's, um, I like to be the boss. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's really, it's working really well at the moment. You have to work hard and keep the culture going, don't you? So we've, we've had we have tribute nights, obviously the Irish nights, and um, we have the IDL, which is about today, um, keeping all the, all the clubs 
connect um, the, around the UK together, keep the culture going. We have live Irish music every Saturday night, um, Irish and country music normally, um, with a bit of a cabaret mixture at the end. Um, we still have uh, the national anthem at the end of the evening. I'm not sure if a lot of places still have that. I'm so alone, my love you have to be a member in the, the in the back the back room, yes, but you have to, you can be signed in. Um, but we are taking on new members all the time, so if anybody wants to be a member, they just ask the club for a form and get someone to sponsor you, and you can become a member. We've had a good turnout today, and it's lovely to see all the clubs turning up for the federation meeting. And um, we just hope that we can get back to what we were two years ago. But the last 12, 18 months has not been very good. for pe People are frightened of coming out, but I don't think they need to be anymore. I think things are getting better with the help of God. We do a lot of charity work, and we did a charity for uh, the Salvation Army, and we got 23 people in just before Christmas, and that just tells for itself. People didn't want to come. We made some money. We made about £300. People which were kind. And it was very good, but people are frightened of coming out. Angus, you've been here today representing the Haslingdon David Democratic League Club, and I believe you've had a big crowd come down. Yes, we've had a full coach and a, and a minibus as well. So it's been very good. I'm very pleased. Well, the clubs, we, we're OK. Financially, we're secure and uh, we have a good membership and um, some very, very good workers. I mean, Fred and his wife put a tremendous amount of work in, as do quite a lot of other people as well, to make sure that the club runs very well. And of course, we mustn't forget your own wife, Kathleen. She's always been the backbone there of the club as well and the golf day. Yeah, yeah, she has. She works quite hard and she gets at me quite a few, on quite a few occasions for just not doing the right thing, but we, we do what we can. Now, we know that Larry Broderick sadly passed away from the Brian Brew Club, and we saw on there that you arranged um, a minute silence for him. Yeah, he deserved it, Larry. Larry was a great believer in the IDL. Done it for years. Most of them people in that room have known Larry for years and years. Big shock to us all. Lovely, lovely man. A long-time president of the club for 20 years. Uh, Larry sadly passed away very recently after his short illness. Larry was a fantastic Irishman, fantastically dedicated to the club and we give all our deepest sympathies to Maura, his wife and all the family. Uh, and we're obviously, we, 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 we owe a lot to Larry for keeping the club going over through torrid times. Well, amazingly, Pendleton District Irish Society, or Paddies as we are known, will have been going for 25 years on the 5th of February. I don't think we ever thought when we started we'd be here so many years later. So on Sunday the 6th of February we're having a huge celebration and we've got Sean Kelly uh, entertaining us. Um, we've got one or two little surprises going on. We're hoping everyone's going to have a really great time because it's been such a bad couple of years. Your club is, is very famous because of the Michael David connection. Well, yes, I mean, um, and we, we keep that we keep the Michael David connection going. It's very very important to us and the people of Haslingdon. Well, we do want quite a few things, including the golf competition. Now, we've, this, with the fourth year, I think uh, we've done the golf competition with Michael David, but we don't want him to be forgotten because he he's part of the um, he's part of the heritage of Haslingdon Club. You've done really well to keep Paddy's going up there in Nelson and Corn for so many, so many years. We're rather amazed, really. <laughs> yeah, we still have um, a handful of founder members are still there. We have quite a lot of members now that are elderly and aren't able to get out very much. Um, and even though they might not come to the gigs, they always renew their membership. They receive the newsletter. They want to know what's going on, what we're up to. They take an interest. So, and that's great. That's great. But we're always looking for new members, uh, always welcome new people. You're involved in a family business as well called CNS Coaches and I know, I know you're very busy. We're very busy. My son and my grandson is running it now. But uh, I would very I started it 51 years ago and um, 
They've taken it over now. They've taken the spirals. <laughs> Looking forward to our St Patrick's Day Parade, obviously we've not had that for a couple of years so that's all um, ready to go. Um, we're really looking forward for everybody to come back, um, we hope that it's going to be a, a big success. And you put on a lovely, lovely um, day for everybody here today. Yes we did, yeah. it's, um, I hope everybody's enjoyed it, it's nice for, to see some of the other clubs come so we'll get the dance floor full today. Well done to them all at the Warrington Irish Club for hosting the day and the delegates from all the other four clubs certainly enjoyed their reunion. Well that's the end of the show for this week. As usual Henry McGlaid will be back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo and we'll be here at half past seven with the Irish in the UK. Until then we'll see you next time.